I want to go over with you just briefly kind of the history of why we do this and what you might run into out in the field with folks you're going to do it a little bit differently and kind of why all right so um like i said you've worked with me as a sophomore when you had isd 101 um we were talking about uh drawing drafting by hand so obviously that's the history of how architectural drawings were done prior to computer aided drafting design which is cad um there are a lot of techniques through history how to how to make copies and reproduce this so you weren't always redrawing everything from scratch kind of one of the last steps that was used was mylar so you'd have um your whole house drawn and then mylar is semi-transparent so if especially if you had a light board kind of desk you could layer a piece over it trace the house again and then you draw all of the um say lighting and then you could pull that away put another layer over draw the furniture um and you could uh photocopy these and uh reproduce these really nicely the the prints would come out really good too so this was kind of one of the last stages of sort of how we would draw professionally was using mylar before everything kind of moved to a computer um because of that though early cad is based on a lot of kind of the thought process of how people generated their drawings and how uh, sets were managed like in a large firm or an office where again you'd have this base plan that would include all the interior exterior walls the doors and windows all the stuff that like once you've uh you know confirmed your plan aren't changing especially for those of us of interiors you get the set that would be the house um then again you're layering things on on it kind of like we did with mylar and that would be things like your plumbing your furniture your lighting and this then kind of starts to correlate into the layers in cad because they would also um once they got into cad this layering system would also determine um your line weights your ink weights things like that that we've talked about in hand drafting class um and it's also a lot like say how you would use photoshop you could turn layers on and off and you would kind of um, manage your drawings that way you would often manage them using paper space meaning you'd have one file and then you'd use paper space and create a bunch of extra tabs and basically like new pieces of paper to have your drawings on and then you would the final touches would be things like putting your title blocks blocks on and your dimensions I'll talk for a minute uh, why we kind of dropped paper space in a second. But um, as the software developed, um, I was actually a student like while like the, this new phase came out where all of a sudden with 3D CAD, we also had the um, introduction of what was called the project manager in CAD, which was a way to more formally organize your drawings um, and just make things kind of more streamlined. And it's also tied into um, dimensioning, which we'll talk about um in the next slide the other thing is the reason i follow this is because kind of everywhere i've worked we've used this technique so i know kind of out in the world um but that's a caveat because there are a lot of older folks still out in the field older than myself who have learned um you know learned it one way the firm has stuck to that their you know their processes work just fine you will still see absolutely beautiful drawings they've done they're just organizing and using the software a little bit differently so they might not use project manager and just kind of have their own in-house thing um so you're going to have to learn to be flexible depending on who you're working with um i also continue to teach it this way to project manager because um because it's kind of considered the default way to organize the files um when revit was bought out by autocad revit has followed the same um naming system and file setup so you learn it with me in tech one adds cad and then we learn it together in revit again it's following the same model and sort of setup of of these files um now every once in a while um we have other professors and adjuncts and stuff who have learned to work in paper space it's not incorrect it's just not a way that i i myself have worked in and like i said i learned it that one semester in school and then by the next semester we were using project manager to set everything up um some of the history of this is that um dimensioning and things used to be uh, you could control them better in paper space but then when cad came out with project manager that was solved so it's much better now to draw your things using project manager because say for example if you had a drawing all set up and it was maybe at a quarter of an inch and you realized nope i need to have this maybe at an eighth of an inch to better fit um 
now within the actual CAD drawing, all your dimensions and text will scale correctly as you either make your drawing smaller or larger, which is not something you can do with paper space. So the majority of folks I know, particularly in really big projects, we don't use paper space anymore because um, you can run into a lot of headaches and a lot of um, work that you're going to have to recreate if, if you change your mind on, on the size of your drawings, which happens a lot in commercial drawings and, and kind of commercial sets too. Um, however, paper space is good for getting just a quick drawing out the door. So, um, you know, explore it. Like I said, if you have an adjunct who's working with you, who's using it, they're not wrong. It's just another form, way of using CAD. Um, but I don't teach it because um, it's kind of falling by the wayside as this, uh, as, as CAD's kind of developing and morphing more with Revit too. All right, so just a reminder before I demo some of this stuff, um, back we'll jump into CAD, um, kind of the way you're going to set up your files in Project Manager are you're going to have a construct. That's going to be what I tend to call like the guts of your drawing. It's going to include everything in that drawing or 3D model, meaning all your walls, your doors, your windows. Usually, too, you put all your furniture in there, all your plumbing. Um, lighting we'll talk about in a minute, depends on where you work, if they, if they put lighting in there or they put it on a view. But really, all the physical components of this building that should not be changing once you've kind of made your final design, that's your constructs. Your views now are where you're going to then put in things like your dimensions and your um, uh, like annotations, like your notes. So you're going to XREF your construct. That means you're going to pull your construct into your view. It's going to be a non-editable file. So when your construct is sitting there in your view, it's called an XREF. It's an XREF drawing, meaning it's referencing back to this construct. Um, so the views, the best practice again for that is you're using that to add text information, dimensions, things like that. And then that view gets pulled, kind of extra back now onto the sheet. The sheet is your final setup of how you're going to print it. So it's basically your title block. And you can, you know, there might be upwards to 10 drawings pulled into that from all these different view files. But your sheet is that final piece of paper basically that gets printed out. And really you are just adding and editing a title block and pulling all those views in together. Um, the sheet's also going to include things like schedules, which uh, at my firm we, we make in the views, either by themselves or with the drawing that they're associated with. Like say if it's a lighting plan, we will have a lighting schedule with it. All right, so we're going to pause for a second and I'm going to pull up some files and we're going to walk our way through that really quick too. So let's see. Oh, oh. 